May every Ramadan be blessed upon you and upon the Muslim Ummah and upon humanity. Allah tells us in the Antanahu fi Laylat Qadr wa ma adraka ma Laylat Qadr. Laylat Qadr khayru min al تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطاع الفجر. Both commentators agree that what Allah has gifted to humanity in a life in a night just like this one. That Allah in Allah's ultimate wisdom chose to call ليلة القدر which roughly translates as the night of fate. وَلَيْلَةُ الْمَقَادِيرِ The night of destiny. That Allah has chose a night just like this one to bless humanity with the gift of the Qur'an. It is a gift to humanity because it is the ultimate companion to all that is good and righteous and beautiful. It is what could guide you, guide me, and guide humanity from discord and confusion to the shores of certitude and tranquility and peace. Allah chose to call Laylat al-Qadr, to describe Laylat al-Qadr as better than a thousand months. And Allah then tells us that on this night, night just like this one, although I have to tell you that with all the scholarly writings of Laylat al-Qadr, although most agree that it is in one of the last 10 nights of Ramadan, there is no agreement as to the precise date. Some said it's the 21st, some said it's the 23rd, some said 25th, 27th, and 29th. But the practice of the Muslim Ummah for centuries has been to celebrate it on the 27th. And we celebrate it symbolically taking account of the fact that Allah tells us that on a night just like this one, the heavens become full with angels, with malaika. And these malaika come with something that Allah describes as a rawh, roughly translated as a spirit, a celestial power whether it is an angel of a higher force or whether it is the essence of mercy or compassion or even the essence of the that ilahiya the essence of what the divine is and will always be whatever it is the malaika come down with the rock that celestial power the power of forgiveness and the power of mercy and the power of love. In doing so, Allah reminds us of something that is very essential and basic. We remember nothing about where we come from. And we live in this curse, easily distracted by material things and physical things. Although we all know for sure that at the end, we will return to a place, a place of light, a place that is unexperienced, but that we must firmly believe in, because it is Dar al-Jazah. It is the place where accounts will be settled, and justice will be established, and those who have done good will benefit from it, and those who have not done good will suffer for it. And in doing so, Allah reminds us that we live in this life, but our nexus and our connection 
to the hereafter, to the heavens, to the Almighty God, La ilaha illahu, must always be firmly in our soul and in our heart. Whatever good that comes, comes from Allah. And whatever that is not good, comes from our own deeds and our own actions. There are those who live life in a state of oblivion, thinking that they will live, experience, feel, speak, hear, and at the end die as if they were never here. And then there are those who are mindful of the fact that what connects the heavens and the earth is Allah, Allah's angels, Allah's spirit, Allah's mercy, and Allah's compassion. We pray that we are of the second category. As Allah truly describes the first group, they are born seeing, but they blind themselves. And they walk through life as if blind, and leave this earth still blind. The second group, they are born seeing, and they only see better and more firmly as life progresses until the veils of are lifted in death and then they see without obstacles and hopefully they see the face of the Lord. I'll teach you a dua that the Prophet ﷺ would often repeat in a light like this, in Laylatul Qadr. I will first read it in Arabic and then I will translate it. اللهم اسألك شكر نعمتك وحسن عبادتك وأسألك قلبا سليما وعقلا راجحا وأسألك من خير ما تعلم وأعوذ بك من شر ما تعلم وأستغفرك مما تعلم وأنت الأعلم اللهم إني أسألك أسألك حبك وحب من يحبك وحب كل عمل يقربني إلى حبك إلى حبك اللهم حببني إليك وإلى جميع خلقك اللهم اجعل حبك أحب إلي من نفسي وأهلي ومالي وولدي حتى أحب ما تحب يا الله In English Allah the greatest blessing that I pray for is to be grateful towards your bounties and to be mindful in my prayers and in worshiping you. I ask you a clean and pure heart and a balanced and probing intellect. I ask you for the best of what I do not know, because I cannot know. And I seek your help from all evil that you know about, but I do not know about. And I seek your forgiveness for all that you know, and I have hidden, so what you have concealed, but Allah knows. For you are always the most knowing. Allah, I beg for your love and to love those who you love and to love every deed that brings me closer to your love. Allah, make me beloved to you and to all people who love you. So make me beloved to them as well. Allah, I beg you to make your love, to make your love more beloved to me than myself, my family, my money, and my children. Until, Ya Allah, I reach the point where I can only love what you love. A beautiful dua that the Prophet ﷺ would repeat reportedly in the last 10 nights of Ramadan 
if the sunnah, if you want to uphold the sunnah, even if you don't have the Arabic memorized, you got the meaning, you understand the gist of it. Repeat that prayer again and again. For there is no greater joy than to receive the spirit that is sent to the light of Qadr and to feel it in your heart through your love of Allah and Allah's love towards you.